So we're standing here with Mark LaLiberté. He's our building science extraordinaire. Uh, been consulting so many companies all over the country, including ours and so many others. And anyways, we're out here with Mark at the Liberty Estate. And today we're going through Fox Blocks ICF, which is something that we've done at your house. You did. As well as many other projects with AFT. And, you know, a lot of the uh, listeners and people that follow our channels have asked about mechanical fasteners. And one of their big questions is, do we have to fur out the walls? Right on the interior because you're dealing with two and a half rigid foam on each, either side and the uh, six inches of concrete in this case, I know it can range six, eight, 10 inches depending on right. structural, but walk us through, you know, from your experience, pros and cons of ICF as well as, you know, the mechanical passive question. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And, and I like the idea that ICFs have their pros and cons like every system, right? Wood does and, and ICFs and even SIPs does. But if we look at these kind of labels here where it says Fox Block, that represents the location of where the nylon furring strips are back inside there. And they're in eight inch centers. So if you're doing interior, if we wanted to, we could actually attach drywall through the fasteners. The challenge with the ICFs are just that pouring concrete into the walls and getting them perfectly straight mm -hmm. is difficult. So a lot of times we end up furring the walls out to get us at least a nice clean wall. Someone who's installing the product and doing an extraordinary job of it can give us a nice flat wall. Short walls usually are easier than long walls. Uh, if we look at on the outside, as you mentioned, kind of about fastening, the other side of this looks similar to this, and it's really difficult to get weather barriers to fasten into this. So we use self-adhereds or liquid flashings on all of these. But the strategy behind and ICFs is just pretty clean. You've got a beautiful six inch solid concrete wall poured against foam on either side. And in a climate like ours, it's, it helps um, hold some of that energy that's flowing back and forth across the wall, slows the way in which the wall builds heat in the, in the summertime and loses energy in the wintertime. So it's a very nice system for our climate. Well, I know what's interesting is that if I'm not mistaken, this can be typically R20 to R24 Correct. on a normal ICF wall. Yours is unique because we did energy sticks, which essentially meant we had two layers of the rigid foam on the exterior, which brought it to like an R30, if I'm not right. mistaken, right. R20 and R30. Yep. And so, you know, you think about just the energy efficiency, especially being a hot climate. I mean, we're here sweating. It's 100 degrees. <laughs> you know, you walk in here and like right now it's holding the heat like a Yeti cooler would. But, you know, the minute we get AC turned on pretty soon once it's a drywall, it's definitely going to hold, you know, that air and keep it nice and cool, sure which is really beneficial. Um, walk us through some of the other benefits, maybe sound, dust, you know, bugs, some of the other elements, uh, fire rating as well. Yeah, those are, you just brought up all the, some really great attributes. When you think of the solid concrete running all the way to footing, that really gives us this kind of monolithic layer of concrete, structurally full of rebar, really a solid wall. And we look at it in terms of sound, you're not going to hear anybody mowing their lawn next door, that's for sure. <laughs> Windows will be about our only uh, leakage for some air, and we've got some beautiful Marvins that'll be nice and tight when you lock those in place. The house should be extremely quiet as you uh, move into seasons where there's kids playing or cars driving. It'll be a beautiful place to on the insect side, it's a great, great comment because imagine the concrete running all the way to the footing. It's going to be a really tough ride for those scorpions to sneak in through mm -hmm. there. They're going to just go like, this house isn't any fun. Let's have, <laughs> head over to the wood house, you know. And I, I think also in terms of overall durability, you know, what an amazingly strong building. You've got your pan deck for your floor, which can beautifully sit on top of a concrete wall like this. So everything is beautifully designed to be structurally sound durable, insect free. And then the last one was fire. And we worry about fire here a little bit, you know, out mm -hmm. here in the desert, it's not quite as bad. We don't have as much fuel, but when it comes through, it's bad. And imagine this house will be so durable, stuck on the exterior and stone gets to the concrete and isn't going anywhere. So we've really built a wall that has tremendous stability over the next hundred years or so and able to man maintain great performance in this complicated climate. Well, that's one of the benefits of hiring Mark. I mean, something that Mark's done for us, you've come in and you've helped us create a set of building standards for our projects, which makes it very beneficial as we're working through pre-construction with architects and designers, um, us from a pricing standpoint to really understand how to communicate that with the client. What's really tough, as you know, is when, you know, engineers, uh, not to throw them under the bus, architects, but they have their way of thinking, how they're trained. Sure. And it's hard to teach new product, new systems, new we dealt with this with the trades too, working through labor. And so Absolutely. when you're working with materials they're not as familiar with, there's definitely a lot of education that has to go through from a design aspect. 
And so that's why you need to have a set building standards and understand those so you can implement those in Precon. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point because the last part of this ends up being we're under the assumption, and a true one, that the building is going to be thermally efficient. Mm -hmm. High performance glass, high performance walls. Now we got to go talk our heating contractor into believing us, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. they're so used to the old <laughs> school of saying, you know what, it's going to be like it's been for the last, uh, you know, 40 years. So I'm just going to put the same size equipment in. And it's hard to get that industry. It's probably the most complicated industry I, I have a hard time breaking past because they always worry about the cost. I'm hot. And they're like, see, I should have put in a bigger system. And you're like, well, that's not always the reason. Right. So it can be something like duct design, grill layout. But if we can get them to say, what's the efficiency, performance, tightness, and the way in which the home is going to perform, then I'm going to assize the right heating and cooling system to that. If we could get them to do a better job of that for us, we'd watch the duct diameters get smaller and the costs come down. So when we go, what's the financial benefit to this? You looked at the fire and sound and all those benefits, but also it should be less expensive to heat and cool. And we just got to talk that industry into helping us through that. We're going to pause there before we go to our next video so our listeners follow along. But I do want to touch on that because we're going to go to the ERV and the mechanical design. And I've been with working with you long enough, Mark, to understand that, you know, industry standard, you'll have the, you know, as they're going through the design for the equipment, 400 square foot a ton, maybe 350. And it's just a staple that this is automatic. This is how we size the units and the house. And that doesn't need to be the case. So right. check out this next video as we work through Mark through the mechanical and ERV design. That's great.